Welcome. This is week three of the advanced topics in plane geometry. Today, I'm going to、uh, talk about two concepts: isogonal and isotomic points. Isogonal and isotomic conjugate points. These are the, these belongs to the important topics of of so called modern geometry. When we say modern geometry, it does not mean it they are the recent. Uh, geometry topics they are at least one hundred years old, but these topics are essentially discovered. These these results are essentially developed and discovered, uh, two one two hundred years to one hundred years ago. Not in the in the old Greek time, like two thousand years ago by Euclid. And the, for for ME test, these concepts are useful because.、Um, They unified a lot of important triangle centers, and、uh, so they 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 made a lot of difficult problem. A lot of difficult problem are made easy. Uh, but if we know these two concepts, okay. So let me introduce the definition of the first one called the isogonal conjugate point. All right. What's what are the isogonal conjugate point? Let P be any point. Assume that so, well that point P. So let's fix a triangle and pick up any point P, and that P can be inside or or outside triangle. That's fine. But pick up pick up any point P, and then we can draw three lines, which we call the A D, B E, and the C F. So these three lines called has a name called the CVNs. And the reason they are called CVNs because la la last week we talked about uh two, one week uh, uh during the first lesson we talked about the CVAT theory, okay. So basically A D B C A D B E and the C F they concurrent at the point F, so that we have B D over D C times C E over E A times A F. Over F B equals zero. That's the Seva theorem part. So now let's draw a so-called isogonal conjugate. Isogonal means the same angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a draw this blue line A D prime so that these two red angles are the same. So the blue line satisfy C A D prime is equal to angle B A D. So we let these two angles to be the same. So in such a way, the blue line is uniquely determined. Okay, very good. So、uh, A D prime is well well defined, and we can also use that、uh, use the same idea to draw B E prime and C F prime. Okay, and、uh, so these three lines, which are, I'm going to prove it, that these lines, three lines must be concurrent as well. They must meet at one point, and that point let's call the P prime, and that P prime is called the isogonal conjugate point of P. Of course, following definition, if it if so. P prime is the isogonal conjugate point of P, and P is also the isogonal conjugate point of P prime because these two angles being the same are reflexive. Okay, so that's that's our definition. So the key part is that how to prove that this P prime ever exists. Okay, so th that means we are going to prove A D prime, B E prime, and C F prime. Is going to they are going to be concurrent, so but let's put this off for a moment, and let's let let's define another concept which is parallel to the isogonal conjugate point, which we call the isotomic conjugate point. Okay, so the first one is called the isogonal conjugate point. So let P be any point again inside or outside triangle. This time. Uh, I don't draw a ang draw a D prime which has the same angle called the isogonal lines as as before. What I'm going to do is I will pick up a D prime so that this guy B D is going to be equal to D C. Okay, so so A D prime is called the isot. 
atomic conjugate line to, towards AD. So these two are the same. And the, so I can do the same thing for the other two sides. So I can pick up E so that AE is equal to EC. I can pick up an F prime. So A, AF prime is equal to FB. And again, magically, by doing so, AD, B, e, AD prime, BE prime, and the CF prime must be concurrent. They must meet at one point. Okay? And that point is called the isotomic conjugate point. So needless to say, if P is the isotomic conjugate point of P prime, I mean P prime is the isogonal conjugate point of P, then P is also the isogonal conjugate point of P prime. So these conjugate points come in pairs. Okay, so in a lot of cases we said P P prime, P and P prime are either isogonal conjugate points or isotomic conjugate points. Okay, so that's the definition. All right, so the first thing we want to do is that we are going to use the knowledge we learned during the first lesson to prove that those CVNs, those green CVNs we created out of the original CVNs, they are actually concurrent. And from this point of view, the proof of existence of isotomic points uh, is, is, is the easiest one, is the easier one. Okay, let's try to use CVN to CVA theorem to prove it. So how to prove that AD prime, BE prime, and the CF prime, they are, they are concurrent? So we have the CVA theorem. By CVA theorem, we just need the BD prime over D prime C times CE prime over E prime A times AF prime over F prime B we just need to check if this is equal to zero or not. Okay, so here is the computation. So by our definition, BD prime, okay, so let's first take a look of DE. So a D prime C. D prime C by our definition is equal to, uh, D prime C is equal to BD. Okay, this guy is equal to that guy. And the BD prime, well, is equal to DC because these two these two line segments are the same, and if you add the one in the middle, they are the same again. All right, so you have this, and th so then this is the reciprocal of BD over DC. Okay, fine, that's that's a nice computation. And what did BD and the DC tells you? Just reminded you. Okay, so BD DC reminded you that the, the Siva theorem. We talked about it before here, BD over DC, okay? So what we are going to do is we will do the same thing for CE prime, EA prime, we get this, and the AF prime to FB prime, we get that. So whether or not AD prime, BE prime, or, and the CF prime intersect at one point depends on their multiplication. If their multiplication were equal to, z to 1, then by the CVA theorem, we get the conclusion. And so it's indeed the case. If you multiple them together, you will see that these are the reciprocal of what I have written out before using the CVA theorem, BDD, BDDC over CEEA times AF over FB. This is obviously equal to zero, so its reciprocal is also equal to zero. So, so that's that's the that's the proof for the existence of isotomic point. In order to prove that using the same method, that there are different ways to prove um, the existence of isogonal conjugate point. And one of my favorite way is to use the following lemma, which I actually talked about. Uh, I, I talked about before, talked about last week, the first week, about using the, the, the cross ratio things. Okay, so here is the theory, which is of its own interest. So in the following picture, if AD and AE are isogonal lines, so if these two lines, are, these two angles are the same, so then we have the following equation, BD times DC times BD over DC times BE over EC, that's equal to AB over AC squared. 
And in a few minutes, I'm going to tell you why this implied the existence of the isogonal conjugate point. But this theory itself is of a lot of interest. So have you ever heard of this um, angle bisector theory? So the angle bisector theory is like, like following. So if I have a triangle, if this is, <coughs> excuse me, if ABC is a triangle, and the D is the so-called angle bisector. So then I have BD over DC is equal to AB over AC. So this guy is actually a generalization of the angle bisector theory, which means, well, if so so the so so if AD is the the angle bisector and the angle bisector line, then its conjug its isogonal conjugate point is equal to itself. So then by this theorem, we, we have both BD equal to B, BE equal BD, DC equal CE, because B and the D, D and the E are the same points. So you get the square of BD over DC is equal to square of AB over AC, so you get the, the angle bisector theorem. Okay, so here I wrote a, uh, I, I wrote a, a theorem, why, why I wrote solution should be proof. Okay. Um, I, I wrote, a, I, I, I gave a purely, um, I, gave, I gave a purely proof, purely geometric proof using similar triangles. It's, it's, it's not an easy way to use similar triangles to prove such a theory. But uh, by, by what we have learned in, in lesson one, we should know that I, I, I'm going to give you chance to do that in the homework. So, so we know that suppose this is alpha, this is beta, uh, this has to be alpha as well. So BD over uh, DC is going to be AB over AC times sine alpha plus beta over, uh, sorry, sine alpha over sine alpha plus beta. We, we, we talked about this sine alpha plus beta. But the DE over EC would be, this, uh, it's not DE, B, BD over DC, BE, BE over EC would be AB over AC times sine alpha plus beta over sine alpha again, just using trigonometry, using law of sines. And then if you multiply these two, you would get the answer because these two are reciprocal, they canceled out. So this is what the theory and what we have learned uh, in lesson one. This complete the proof. Okay, so now let's use that to you use that theory and we can use Siva theory again to prove <coughs> that the P prime exists and the P prime is the concurrent point of A D prime, B E prime, and the C F prime. Why? Because we using we use the theory, we get this, we get this, we get this, and we put them together, and uh, so so the right hand side they cancelled out A B over A C, B C over C A, and the C A over uh, A B A C, uh, B C over A B. Sorry, there's a typo, and uh, C A over B C. So. Uh, so C A over B C yes so so they cancelled out no problem but left hand side these three guys multiple together by the C V A theorem is equal to zero so therefore these three guys multiple together is forced to to be to be one okay sorry this this red one multiple together would be equal to one and the green one has to be equal to one as well so by the C V A theorem P prime <coughs> is it exists and it is the concurrent point of AD prime, BE prime, and the CF prime. Okay, so what are the typical isogonal lines? Well, the one of the most typical isogonal lines is in the following picture. So here we have triangle ABC, and the, the, the blue circle is the so-called circumcircle of, of triangle ABC, which this, this is the unique circle that passes all the three vertices of the triangle. And the letter O be the center of the circle. So this O is called the circumcenter. We, we talked about it the last time, circumcenter. 
and uh, we take the height AD over BC and uh, so these I claim that these two angles must be the same why well it's very easy there are two two things we have to notify so first this is the right angle why because this is the subscribed angle inscri sorry in inscribed angle to to diameter and diameter corresponding to 180 degrees and uh, so so the the inscribed angle is half of that so that's 90 degrees number one number two is that this angle is equal to that angle because they, they are the, the, the inscribed angles over the same arc lens, over this arc lens. So these two angles are the same. So therefore, these two green angles are the same. And so this actually gives us the, 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 the very important corollary. Basically, you see, this is the line that passing through the circumcenter. And this is the height. And what would be the intersection of three heights? That's called the orthocenter. And the O is called the circumcent. And therefore, we know that the also center and the circumcenter, they are isogonal conjugate points. They are a pair of isogonal conjugate points. Okay, so we are, we are going to talk about this later. And uh, so, in a lot of cases, we prove that three lines intersect at one point using the so-called SIVA theory. But in, in some other cases, we need to use the following so-called cannot theory. Cannot theory. Okay, which basically say, if in a triangle, if you start not at, at three vertices, but three points on the three sides, and they draw vertical lines, and when these three vertical lines would be concurrent. And here is the criterion. The criterion is a little bit, the, the equation is a little bit long, but the, in reality, it's quite easy to prove. It's easy, easier to prove and uh, easier to use as well. So let me state. So let, in the following triangle, let OD is perpendicular to BC, OE is perpendicular to CA, and OF is perpendicular to AB. So then OD, OE, and OF are concurrent if and only if we have a complicated expression, BD square minus DC square, CE square minus EA square, and AF square minus FA square is equal to one. And so here is the proof. Okay. So we assume that we first assume they are concurrent. And then by the Pythagorean theorem, we have BD square minus DC square is equal to OB square minus OC square. Why is that? Well, we have BD square is equal to OB square minus OD square, right? And the DC square is OC square minus OD square as well because we have two right triangles. And if you subtract these two, you would get what I wanted. And by the same reason, we have the other way around, CE square minus CA square is that, and the third one as well. And if we add these two, we basically add the right-hand side, which they basically want to, a pair of just, they are cancels out, is e making it equal to zero. Okay, conversely, I'm, I'm not going to say it, it's just the use, the, the uniqueness, right? So you, you can prove that if the condition is true, then automatically these three blue lines must be meet at the point O. Okay, so the theory is still valid even when O is outside the triangle, making it more general. Okay. All right. So here I'm going to uh, give the second proof of the existence of isogonal conjugate point. So this proof is um, a little bit complicated, but it's a purely geometric pr proof. It's even more pure than the proof I, I mentioned before. Using Siva theory is completely fine, but the, the dilemma to prove 
the, 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 the Syrian I used here, we have to use a little bit law of signs. Okay, so, so we tried, if, if we don't want that, we can use Kano Syrian to prove this. And the idea is just the, 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 the prototype. So here's the prototype. What are the isogonal conjugate lines? The height and the, the, the diameter through, the diameter of the circum circle through one of the vertices. They are essentially um, isogonal conjugate point. In general, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, the, the picture here is quite complicated, but I can explain this quite quickly. So starting from this P, uh, in the last proof, I use Siva serine, A, D, B, E, C, F. I use Siva serine, but this time I can use Kano serine. And uh, essentially, if I use P to project to B, C to B, X, uh, to the, the, this should be Y and this should be Z, and uh, it doesn't matter. And uh, so then um, I have Kano theorem, basically uh, Bx square, Xc square. Okay, I, so, so, so this should have been, let, let, let's keep that. So, so, so Bx square minus Xc square, Cz square minus Za square, Ay square minus Yb square. Um, it would be equal to uh, zero. And so once we do that, so, so, so this x, y, z is called a pedal triangle. Triangle. And the pedal triangle has a lot of interesting properties which we can talk about later. And once you do this, do this tri pedal triangle, you would find that this pedal triangle actually is perpendicular to the other three CVNs. Okay, so so it's actually this is perpendicular, this is perpendicular, and the, what the the third one where is the third one? Yeah, this is perpendicular. Yeah, yeah, there, there, there are three of them. Okay, so yeah, so how to prove that? And the reason is that well, this angle is equal to that angle. And uh, so uh, this angle is actually equal to, let, let, let's look at this. Yeah, so, so because this is, this is the right angle, so we know that this angle is equal to this angle. Okay, because these four points, let, let me erase. Okay. So we know that this is the right angle and that this is the right angle. So these four points, A, Y, P, Z, will be concyclic. Once they are concyclic, this angle is equal to that angle because they are the angle over the same arc length. They are the inscribed angle over the same arc length. And these two angles are the same by our assumption because they are conjugate, isogonal conjugate points. So therefore, the, if this angle is the right angle, you prove that this angle is the right angle as well. So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting ob observation that the, 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 the pedal triangle is perpendicular to the all three uh, CVNs, the green CVNs. And why this, that's useful? Well, we are, we are able to use the Kano theory to prove that these three angles, uh, the, these three blue angles, are the are conjugate. So how to do that? So basically, we will see that YL, LZ would be equal to, by Pythagorean theorem, YL, LZ, YL square, LZ square, or AY square minus AZ square. And the other one, you have to like uh, uh, ZN square minus NX square will be CZ square minus CX square and, uh, and, and so on. And so therefore, three green lines which will concurrent to one point if and only if this summation of this would be equal to zero. And so, so that forced the right-hand side to be zero. The right-hand side, at the first glance, it's not obvious this would be zero. But the, po the point is that YP, XP, and ZP, they are concurrent. And once they are concurrent, 
Well, by the Carnot theorem again, so the summation of this would be equal to zero, and therefore we get uh, we can conclude the proof. So, so this proof is more interesting, even though it looks like more complicated, but it's a it's quite a, a beautiful proof. I, I like this proof a lot. And it also have told you a lot of important information, like the pedal triangle is corresponding to the isogonal CVS, some, something like that, right? You, 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 you put three projections, and these will be perpendicular to CVS as well. Okay. All right, so, so this is the first part of our class. Uh, so now I would like to give you examples of isogonal conjugate and isotomic conjugate points. It, it, I, I have already mentioned the also center and the circumcenter, they are isogonal conjugate points. And so I'm going to, I, I'm going to uh, introduce you more important triangle centers through these two concepts. Okay, so the first one, I, I should actually write down here. So, ortho center and the circum center, they give a prototype of the, the conjugate points. That's number one. Number two, I think, among all the examples, is the conjugacy, isogonal conjugacy, of the centronoid and the so-called semedian point. You probably know centronoid a lot. Centronoid is uh, the, the, the intersection of three medians. If you have any triangle, you take the middle point of one side and draw to the other vertex, you get a median. And the three medians must meet at one point, and that's called a centronoid. That's something you probably know quite well. And the semedian, you, you probably don't know very well, but we, we have one homework problem last week. Basically say this is the point, semedian is the unique point whose distance, the sum of distance squared. So this is the point, let's call the K, uh, the projection is called X, Y, Z. So KX squared plus KY squared plus KZ squared is minimal. That's the point. That point is called the semedian. Of course, that's that is the way to define semedian is. The, the the formal definition of the semedian is that it is the isogonal conjugate point of of the median of the of the centroid. Okay? So you basically draw this is the median and this is the semedian line. And one is called the median. One is called the semedian, and the three semedian points meet at one point. It's also called the semedian point, or glip point, or lemon point. Uh, it has been extensively studied. It has a lot of interesting properties in triangle geometry. And uh, so, so for more details of the semedian point, you can you can go to Wikipedia or topic sixteen. Unfortunately. For, a topic sixteen hasn't been completed, so you can you can look up the, the the the, the web page, uh, the the Wikipedia for for more details of the semedian. And there's more exotic pair of isogonal point, and one is called the first isogonal center and the first isodynamic isodynamic point. Okay, so these two are the same. Uh, so. I, I don't have time to give you details. What I can do is I can um, give you the definition. So both points are interesting triangle centers. What is the first isogonal center? So you start with uh, triangle. Probably you have heard the Napoleon theorem, but uh, if you don't, so this is something related to it. So give any triangle. What you can do, you can draw three equilateral triangles to outside. Okay, and once you do that, then you can draw three lines. Oh, let me try to. 
Yeah. So these three lines must meet at one point. Okay. So that point is called the first isogonal point. Okay. So the famous Napoleon theorem basically tell you that it is the uh, so so maybe I can take this opportunity to, to, to show you what the Napoleon theory. So you take the centers of these three equilateral triangles, and this will form a equilateral triangle by itself. And if you shrink this equilateral tri triangle into the triangle, that triangle is the, the, the minimal, the, 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 the inscribed tri triangle takes the minimal parameter. Okay, so that's that's what uh, that's something related to the first isogonal point and uh, so there's another unrelated point seemingly unrelated is called the, the first isodynamic point so what is the first I isodynamic isodynamic point okay so it is obtained by the following so um uh you can draw a circle which is uh, so 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 maybe let me tell you another property so the property is this the, is the unique point ap prime times bc is equal to bp prime times ac is equal to pc prime times ab so that's the point, and this is the way to draw it, and uh, so you can you can read read the the these topics in topic thirty three about the first dynamical isodynamical isodynamical point and the first iso isogonal point, okay, and there's a second isogonal point which is a isogonal conjugate point of the second isodynamical point. Okay, so these two are the typical uh, isogonal conjugate points in triangular geometry. And what are the typical examples of uh, isotopic conjugate points? Well, they are given by the so-called Gurgaon point and the Nagel point. Okay, so Gurgaon point and the Nagel point. So, so let, let, let me just give you a brief introduction to Gurgaon point because this is also one of the important triangle uh, centers. So we start with any triangle. We know that there is an inscribed center. Okay, let me adjust this. Let's see if possible to make them quite difficult. Anyway, th this, this is called the inscribed circle, which is tangent to all three sides of the triangle. The center of the inscribed in inscribe uh, the center of the inscribed circle is called the in center okay so this is probably you know very well this is the point whose distance to three sides are the same and what is the Gurgaon point the Gurgaon point is obtained by the following so suppose this is the, so so this is tangent part tangent point is d and the e and the f okay so so then uh, you can draw ad B, E, and the CF, and they meet at the point G. Okay, so A, B, C. So A, D, B, E, and the CF is called, the, 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 not is called, they are concurrent. Ah, concurrent at the so called Gurgaon point. Okay, so here is the picture. A, D, B, E, and the C, F. So if we do its isotomic conjugate point, which is P prime, we get so-called Nagel point. Okay. And what surprised us and make it more interesting is the, uh, the, the Nagel point can also obtain by another way. So instead of using the, the, the inscribed circle, we... We, we, we can draw, you know, each triangle has like a three X-scribed circles. There, there are three of them. And so we can prove that this F prime, F prime is defined to be, to be like BF prime equal to AF prime. However, 
f prime is also the tangent point of the x squared circle to the side AB. We can prove that. So Nagel point can actually be defined in another way. So you draw three x circles, and you have three tangent points. And the, if you draw these three tangent, three CVNs out of these three tangent points, you would get a Nagel point. And uh, so Nagel point and the Gogan point are not isogonal conjugate point. They are Einstein examples of isotomic points. Okay, so that's the second part of our lecture. So you may find that these isogonal or isotomic conjugate points are quite, quite mysterious. Well, they are in terms of triangular geometry, and they are also fascinating. But if we take a look using algebra, well, they are quite simple in the following sense. So remember last time we talked about the tri trilinear coordinates. So the question, the natural question is, what is the relationship between the two isogonal conjugate points in terms of trilinear coordinates or in terms of barycentric coordinates? Okay, so if, if, if you forgot, let me very quickly go over what trilinear coordinates is. For any point P, inside or outside triangle, doesn't matter. So we can take the distance of P to all three sides. So let me emphasize that the, the distance I'm talking about here is the so-called assigned distance. Okay, meaning that if P is inside the triangle, then the distance are counted positive. If we have a point below here, then the distance of P to BC is counted negative and its distance to AB and AC are counted positive. If you have a point here, then the distance to AB is still positive, but to both BC uh, and, and AC, the distance are counted a negative distance. So these are called the sine distance we talked about last time. And the trilinear coordinates is just the ratio, not the actual distance, is the ratio of X to Y to Z. Okay, so let me remind you that what is the trilinear coordinates for circumcent? It is the it is cosine A, cosine B, cosine C. We we computed last time. How about the orthogonal center? Sorry, also center. Also center. It's secant A over secant B over secant C, right? And what did you find? You find out these numbers are reciprocal to each other. And this is indeed the general principle, the general theory. Any two conjugate points, isogonal conjugate points, they, 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 they look quite different. But in terms of trilinear coordinates, they are reciprocal to each other. And this is the theory I'm going to show you. In the following triangle, let P prime, uh, P prime is the isogonal conjugate point of P. And uh, so the trilinear coordinates of P and the P prime are called inversely proportional to each other. And moreover, if you project P to the three sides of the triangle, we know that you that, you, that, that therefore you, you form the three pedal triangle and you use P prime to project to the three sides, then you would get altogether six six points. They are concyclic. They, they, they are on the same circle. Okay. So let's let's do that. Let's prove that. So um, we see that PAC, this triangle is going to be similar to P B prime, P prime C. And the reason is that these two angles are the same and for the right, for, 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 for two pairs, for a pair of right triangles, if one angles, one pair of angles are the same, then they are conjugate, they, they, are, they are similar. And once they are similar, we know that P A over P prime B prime is P C over P prime C prime. Okay? And we can, do, do the same thing for PB prime, P prime, A prime is equal to PC over PC as well. 
and the, so right so PB so P so so this triangle and the PB and the P prime B prime so so basically we say that the um, sorry PB PB and the P prime A prime P prime A prime okay so so this angle is also equal to that angle so again let, let me check. so this angle is also equal to that angle so we have another quotient so if we put them together we would get PB prime P A P prime B prime is P B P prime A prime so therefore P B over P B prime is P prime A prime O reciprocal of P prime B prime P prime B P prime A prime over reciprocal of P prime B prime similarly we have other quotient so therefore this is true and so therefore we know that they are inverse proportional to each other these three these two coordinates has the very nice property that one is the reciprocal of the other okay so uh we haven't proved that why these six circles six points basically um Cyclic. So what we will do is we will prove that any four of them, so these four, will be concyclic. So how to prove that? Well, the reason is that if you draw a line here, you draw another line of line here, uh, what you will get is uh, this angle. This angle is going to be equal to because. Uh, Right, so so we could equal to this because these four points are concyclic. You have to equal to that, and also if you go this one, and this would be equal to to that one as well. Yeah, right, because these four points are concyclic, but this angle is ninety degree minus this, okay, and uh, so this angle is ninety degree minus minus that. These two angles. They are conjugate isogonal conjugate lines, so these two angles are the same. So therefore, this angle is equal to that angle, and so therefore these four points are on the same circle. We call the concyclic. And also by the same method, you can prove that all the rest of the points are on this, on this circle, and we are done. All right. So, bicentric coordinates is just a variation of trilinear coordinates. So, so let me just uh, skip this complicated definition and tell you the answer. So if P has trilinear coordinates x over y over z, then it's Barycentric coordinates is AX, BY, CZ, where here is A, B, C. A is equal to B, C, B is equal to C, A, and C is equal to A, B. So basically, this is, this is what we, uh, we can talk about. We know so so that the, so so this is a good just uh, transformation between the trilinear coordinates and bicentric coordinates. If you know one, you know the other. All right. So, what? Why we introduce bicentric coordinates? Well, for isogonal conjugate points, their their trilinear coordinates are reciprocal to each other, and for for the isotomic conjugate points, their barycentric coordinates are reciprocal to each other okay and uh, this one it's it's easier to it's it's easier to prove so basically what's the bicentric coordinates of a point p it's the distance times that so it's the ratio of the triangle aerial triangle pbc pca and the pab so that is the the the, the biocentric coordinates okay so Yeah, so we use delta x, y, z to denote the area. Then E, E, B, C, 
E B C and the E B A will be equal to C E E B C E B A that will be equal to C E over E A and 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 so on. And uh, so therefore, we we can prove that. Well, so let's say P has the barycentric coordinates x, y, z. Basically, x is the area of P B C. Y is the area of PCA and Z is the area of PAB. Okay, and what is X over Z to say? X over Z is equal to CE over EA. That basically that's CE over EA, which is equal to the reverse of CE prime over E E prime A reverse. We we know that before because these two are the same. We we played that game before. And what is CE over EA? That would be basically the area uh, of P prime BC to P prime AC. So that would be equal to X prime over Z prime reciprocal. If X prime, Y prime, Z prime gives the barycentric coordinates of, of P prime. Okay, so that's the relation. So therefore, we will get X over Y over Z equals, uh, is, 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 is basically equal to x prime negative 1, y prime negative 1, c prime negative 1. So that is, that's the relationship between the two. So we know that if we know the barycentric coordinates for the Grogan point, then the Nagel point is just as easy, just the reciprocal to find. It's the it's a negative to it. Okay, the reciprocal coordinates to it. Okay, so here is, here we will conclude our uh, today's class by giving the following complicated example. Okay, so so this example, this theorem says that the isogonal conjugate point of the isotomic conjugate point of the ortho center of a triangle is on the Euler line. So what is the Euler line? Euler line we talked about the last time is the line that passes O, the circumcenter, and the H, the ortho center, and the G, the centrinoid, right? And we also know the nine-point center is also on the Euler line. Today, I'm going to show you that this strange point, the isogonal conjugate of the isotomic conjugate point of the ortho center. So what is the isotomic conjugate point of ortho center? I don't know, but there's a point there. Right, and uh, so so then if you take the isogonal conjugate point of that point, you will get a point which happens to be sitting on the Euler line. Okay, so rem remember that the isogonal conjugate point of the also center is the circumcenter. The isotomic conjugate point of the also center is well a no name point. But then if you take that point and take the isogonal conjugate point, that point has to be on the Euler line. So how to prove it? We gave a purely geometric proof here. I will skip, you, have, you, can, you, can, you can read this. It's, it's an interesting read of this problem using purely geometric method, a little bit trigonometry. But I'm going to use what we have learned the last time. I, I'm going to compute that the, 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 the trilinear coordinate at that point. And then we try to prove that using algebra to prove that point is actually on the Euler line. So what should I do? So first, what is the trilinear coordinate of H, the, the ortho center? The trilinear coordinate of H is secant A, secant B, secant C. And now I want to find its isotomic conjugate point. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change it to the to the barycentric coordinate. Okay, so the relation is I know x, y, z is transformed to ax, by, cz, right? And uh, so, but a, b, c are the three sides of the triangle, which is by the law of sines is proportional to sine a, sine b, sine c. So what we will basically get is sine a times secant a, which is equal to tangent a. So the conclusion is that the barycentric coordinates of H is tangent A, tangent B, tangent C.
That's the first step. We reached the coordinates, the barycentric coordinates of H, the barycentric coordinates of H. And then we know that its isotopic conjugate point H prime has to has the barycentric coordinate which makes upside down. Cotangent A, cotangent B, cotangent C, which is here. And so if we, we want to transfer it back, okay, so, so we, we still want trilinear coordinates. So we divide it by A, divided by B, divided by C respectively, but dividing by A, as we know, is the same thing as dividing sine A. So cotangent A divided by sine A is basically cosine over sine square A, and the cosine B, sine square B, and the cosine C, sine square C. So that would be the trilinear coordinates for H prime. And then we want its isogonal conjugate point. So the isogonal conjugate point of H prime, which I call the H double prime, is sine, make it upside down, sine square A, cosine A, sine square B, cosine sine square cosine C. Okay, so now we want to prove that this point is actually on the OLA line. What should I do? Well, I pick up two lines, so this is H, and this is the circumcenter, and I place this point here. So basically, I want to prove that this determinant is equal to zero. So how to prove that this determinant is equal to zero? Well, it's just subtraction, right? You subtract the second one to the third one. This is cosine A minus secant A, which is cosine a minus 1 over cosine a. So you would get cosine a cosine square a minus 1, which give you negative sine square a over cosine a. And now you know you are done because the second row minus the first row and add to the third row would get 0. So therefore, the determinant is going to be equal to 0. And that proved we're using our trilinear coordinates and the, 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 the properties of isogonal and the barycentric uh, isotomic conjugate points. And we, we, we proved this very difficult geometry problem. You can, you can, you can read the, the purely geometric proof. It's quite intricate. Okay. And uh, so I, I will stop here. In the homework, you will have an opportunity to practice all these examples. Okay. Thank you.